By the way, this show is sponsored by Corona Extra. Available oh, yeah. All code off licenses. So. Well, this one is sponsored by Anbasol. Welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Rate the Transfer Rumour show. We've got six players on the list this week. And the good thing that's about this week with the six players is the fact that they're all linked to six completely different clubs. So we like to be versatile in this show, don't we? We try anyway. <laughs> try anyway. If you're new here, uh, Daz basically rates the transfer rumours from one to ten. One being it's not happening ten. It's definitely happening. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, Daz, we'll start off with um, a player that recently left your club, Bohemians, Paddy Kirk. Being linked with a move back to the showgrounds and Sligo Rovers. Now, to be fair, it'd be a funny one in a sense. Paddy was at obviously Bowes. He left Bowes to join Sligo. He left Sligo to join Bowes, and interestingly, he could make the switch again. But his best football, probably uh, that I've personally seen play in his career, was that season at Sligo Rovers left back. I thought he was very good. So maybe from his point of view, he's thinking that, and maybe it's like Rovers are thinking that as well, that, look, he was good when he was here only a couple of years ago, that uh, he'd be an addition to us. So how are you seeing that one? Yeah, well, I suppose, firstly, obviously, Paddy got released from Bowes this season, and he, he got quite a lot of stick off the fans. Um, but he was a player I was quite fond of. He, he always tried really hard when he was in the team. He put in a few hard-hitting tackles, and look, I'd be sorry to see him go, but I hope, I hope we can get someone, an, an upgraded version, if we can. But uh, look, he was a player always gave a hundred percent, and that's what anyone wants in their team. You kind of want a player that'll always give you one hundred percent. So best look to his wherever he goes on to next. In terms of where he's been linked to, I was actually expecting you to say Cork or Drada, because that's what I've seen. I actually haven't heard anything but Sligo. But Sligo is an interesting one. Like you said, he played with them and actually had a very good season with them before he rejoined Bowes. I was thinking, oh yes, he's he's really developed and all. He's he's got to push on another level now with us when he signed back. But unfortunately, it, it, it it's as if he took a step backwards. I think in, in how he played and all, and he was caught a few times with us. I thought, look, he wasn't a poor enough team with a very leaky defense. It conceded a lot of goals. Um, but Sligo actually did pretty okay towards the end of the season, mid to the end of the season, and um, I think he probably will stay in the Premier Division. I think. Um, I don't really think he's going to go to any of the Dublin clubs. If draw to stay up, maybe they have a show at getting him. And I suppose if you're supposed to look at another club outside of all of that, I think Sligo would probably be a good destination for him. Um, I, I think it'd be a place where the fans would get behind him and I think he'd be out there to prove Bo was wrong. And I think players have come back and done that to Bo's in the past. Um, I, I think I'm going to put this one key at, at a six. Um, I think it's reasonably, you know, reasonable to consider that it's something that's on the table. But I, I just think he might look to try and stay in or around Dublin. That's why I don't have a higher. Um, but I put it as six. I I'd say he will get an offer from Sligo. Right. So Paddy Kirk to Sligo Rovers is a six out of ten. Staying with Bowles as such, except to linking the player with Bowles. And we talked about in the last uh, rate your transfer rumor show. By the way, guys, if you haven't checked that out, still check that out. We talked about how Colin Whelan uh, was linked with a move to Bowles. Now, Bowles, I would imagine, be looking for a couple of strikers to get two in anyway, to be honest with some of the players who've left the club. And you, you generally need two, maybe three, depending on how you play. But Jamie Gullen from Dundalk, the Scott uh, to Bowles, a player that, you know, I think played better in the first half of the season for Dundalk, scored a couple of cracking free kicks, particularly one at Inch Cork and St. Patrick's Athletic, scored a couple of goals. Strong player. Good at holding the ball up, could probably improve his goal record. But that said, he was in a team that didn't score many goals. But um, yeah, an interesting player, Jamie Gullen. How do you see that one to, to Bohemians? Yeah, first of all, I, I think he, when he came into the league, he did reasonably well. Mm. Obviously, he, he was in a poor enough mm. Dundalk side. And I'm, I'm sad to see Dundalk go, hopefully come back up. But um, I think if he was to go into that Bowes team, he's got a Ross Tierney, a Dawson Devoy, and a James Clark, really creative players around him that can feed him the ball. And I suppose in the last four or five years, Bowes even further, I've always played with kind of a hole up striker, a strong striker. And I actually think as well, we've been, I know Flores can, but he hasn't really done it this season. We've been missing a set piece taker. 
and I'm I'm always a big fan of a set, someone who can score a goal from a free kick mm. give you that option of um pulling out and Austin like I think it's a really big asset to have in the team and it's something I would always try and have. Um I would like both to try and stay within the League of Ireland or the UK at this time and not be going to the Japanese third league for a player. So I'm happy he didn't link someone from the Japanese third league to his keep. But, <laughs> but there's um, always plenty of more shells to come. Oh well there you go. Um Oh, you know, he had he scored a few really crappy free kicks like and from the left side and from the right side and yeah, I, th- I think he was a really good player and you know Dundalk isn't that far away from North Dublin and he probably will be looking to stay within the League of Ireland and he's a player I think would slot in well at balls and I think he's he ticks a lot of boxes, bars goal scoring ability. Mm. But if you look at past players that join balls like Afalabi and even Georgie Kelly, they didn't really score an awful lot of goals before they joined us really. I don't think too many people would have predicted the amount of goals they returned for our team, but it's kind of how we play it, where fast wingers, good wingers, and good midfielders. Um, I, I put this reasonably high. I'd, I'd put it at seven. I think there's definitely something there. I think Dundalk were gone. I think he's looking for a club. Um, I don't think he's good enough for any of the other Dublin clubs. I, I hate putting balls down in that bracket, but being real here, we're kind of next best with all of them at the minute with where our team is and where we're at as a club. So I think in terms of all that, I'd, I'd probably put as a seven. I, I think it's reasonably likely to happen and I would definitely welcome them to the club. So Jamie Gullen to Bohemian 7 out of 10, Daz says, uh, John Ross Wilson recently left Sligo Rovers. Possible move to Drotta United here. Now Drotta do have a good uh, right back in Elise, but I'm not sure what could happen to him at the end of the season, whether he'd stay or leave, etc. John Ross, a player that I tied him well at Sligo. Rovers, but uh, seems to want to move back to the Dublin region, let's say. I think that's been a big thing for, from his point of view. And uh, a lot of people seeing that he was released from Sligo Rovers. He wasn't really released. It was just a case of he wanted to actually leave, essentially. So, yeah, decent right back. He was at Shelburne before. A lot of people might remember when he was at Shells as well and uh, could play wing back, right wing, right wing back, I should say, and right back. Um you know, his brother's Tyreek, obviously, as well, who's at Shells, interestingly, as well. But he's a different type of player to Tyreek. He's more maybe athletic, maybe, than Tyreek yeah. is. Uh, can get up, up and down fairly well. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, a galloping right back or right wing back, in my opinion. And uh, you could see who's actually dropped his wing back system. So how would you see that one? Yeah, I, I think, you know, draw that play like, with a lot of commitment with their players are mm. kind of a hard-working team of collective players. They're not really an in individualistic team like some player, like some teams of individual players who can go out of nowhere. Drogheda have, you know, for the last few seasons been collectively good team that work hard together. I think he, he would fit a team like that, whereas he might go missing in a team where there's individuals, really, he might be kind of caught up a bit more, I think. But like you said, yeah, everything you said, I completely agree with right? athleticism. He's got a bit of pace. He gets up and down. Um, right back, um, right wing back. He can, you know, play out wide. He can make the pitch big. He can, he, he he's actually okay at crosses. I think as well. Mm. I've seen him put a few dangerous balls in. So, I think that was that was Sutrada. And yeah, he wasn't released from Sligo from what I gathered as well. He just didn't renew really his contract. There's every you know possibility he could rejoin Sligo. Um, like he's not released. It's not like they wanted to get rid of him. I'm sure he had a contract offer and he's seen his options. So. I probably I probably would have him at balls as well. So that's 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 saying he's a good player in my eyes. Um, in terms of wanting to go to the Dublin region, I can fully see him wanting to be in the Premier Division. I think he's a good enough player for the Premier Division. Um, in, in terms of other teams around Dublin, you you, you know you got shells, you got Rovers, you got us Pats. I don't really think any of them teams, bar maybe Bowes, will be looking for someone in his position and and his kind of player. Then you got Rada and Dundalk. So I actually would put this one reasonably likely as well. I'd probably put it as an, an eight. I think it's very likely to happen. I think he's he'd be a very good player for Drada. Um I think the fans would get behind him and I think he would push on as a player and I think he'd really fit their system and fit how they play and I think he'd complement the existing team there. So I think it's a reasonably good transfer for all parties involved. I, I don't see what, maybe why that wouldn't happen if he was offered a contract from Drada unless the likes of a Bose came in and offered more money or Sligo offered more money and he decided to stay. So I put as an eight. Um, I think he's reasonably high to happen. Yeah. So John Ross Wilson to draw the United eight, eight out of ten. Uh, Rory Gaffney, obviously, um, he's been very good throughout the seasons for Shamrock Rovers and their title wins, etc. 
this season has been missing all season basically he's been injured essentially all season big loss to them but i believe he's 35 now yeah uh, and i've come on off the back of an injury i won't say even injury hit season he's just been injured all season it's difficult to see him maybe get back into the way of things at Shamrock Rovers. But uh, Galway United could be interested. There was talk about this last season and obviously stayed at Shamrock Rovers. Galway United could definitely do with a striker. Franz Lee um, Lamboto has actually left the club to join Sligo Rovers. Uh, of course, they've got Stephen Walsh there as a different type of striker. But if there was an opportunity for Galway United to get Gaffney, even though he's a bit older, I think he could be a really good signing for Galway. How would you see that one? Yeah, I think I think firstly, we always been a terrific player in the league, and um, he's got a lot of respect from the fans throughout the league. I think he's a really hard working striker, and mm. you know he's persistently been really good, and he's even really good off the ball. If you ever watch him off the ball, he's always drifting into areas and picking up pockets of pace. He gives defenders a real nightmare, and I think that's a really good quality to have in a striker. It's something I love to see. And I wish more players would like that. Um, but like you said, he is getting on a bit. So that kind of push, pushes the ball out maybe to the other clubs. In terms of Galway, I think that's a very interesting one. I, I, I certainly wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to pull out Galway there. Um, but I think you've really improved that Galway team. Like, really improved them. And like I said, when Lamata was gone, and he was someone that they kind of relied on, I thought, a lot. Um, just, you know, he was a good player for them. And he, he's gone, like, the need to fill the position. But... You know what? What team isn't looking for a striker? Every team needs a striker. Everyone's looking for a striker, and I think we're always going to have plenty of options. And I think I would go as far as say every Dublin club would be in for him. I would even say Derry would be in for him. Cork would be in for him. Like, why not? I think most clubs would probably offer him a contract of some description. Um, I would would have taken a fifty percent fit Rory Gaffney this for the whole season of Bowes and what we had. <laughs> I think a lot of 100%. other teams probably would have as well. Um. Yeah, no, I think he's a great player. In terms of feelings for Galway, I I would put a five. Um, my reason being is I think he's going to want to remain in Dublin, and I, he's not going to be short in offers. There's four clubs around the area that I think we can give him a reasonably good contract. I don't think he'll move to Bowes because Rovers. You don't really see a Rovers player moving to Bowes now. That's a really good player. You see underage or younger players mm. moving, but not really established senior players. It's normally the other way around. But um. Yeah, I, I, I'd put it as a five. Um, it's just for that reason. I think he's not going to be short on offers, but I do think he'd be something in it. And I think he'd be a really good addition for Galway if they come. And I think he would work really well with that team. So Rory Gaffney to Galway, now he's five out of ten. We've two more now. Uh, Dara Power, Waterford FC to St. Patrick's Athletic. Obviously, Dara, fairly marauding right back. Um, for me, him and Sean Gannon are the te- two best right backs in the league this year. Slightly different the way they play, but uh, Power, as I said, marauding, um, quite creative as a right back, go cross or can get up and down. Uh, Pats at the moment have Schoberg um, and McLaughlin, but there's questions whether they'll be staying at the club. Pats will probably want two right backs anyway. Um, Power has been at Waterford for a long, long time since he's yeah. a U player. Apparently, this is what I've been told. Anyway, he's currently out of con- he's definitely out of contract, but apparently he's refused to sign a contract with Waterford. And apparently, Pats and Rovers are waiting in the wings. But from <laughs> what I hear, Pats seem to be the ones that are pushing more. How do you see that one? Yeah, uh, obviously, Powers are very, very good player. And um, like you said, there, I completely agree with everything. And I actually think he's quite skillful as well and a very technical right back. He gets up and down. He, he's fast. He's good at defending. And um, yeah, a pass are definitely in the market for a right back. And the players you've mentioned there, he's certainly an upgrade in them players. And I think, you know, the chance to play for Stephen Kenny, the most probably the most respected manager in the League of Ireland, obviously up there with Stephen Bradley at the minute. And he just managed the Ireland team. He, he got past the most informed team in the League of Ireland there um, throughout the season. It was like eight games unbeaten or something, eight wins, I think, in a row or something like nine that. Nine wins in a row, yeah. Um, nine wins in a row, like that's pretty amazing I know the season's over with now but you can see the difference Kenny made once he got his team right and obviously Kenny likes to play with wing backs and he likes to play with wingers and mm. he's going to be looking at wing players really he he needs to get a right back and I, in my opinion he probably needs to get a left back as well I think anyway to improve that team overall mm. Um, I'd put this at an 8 I think he will move I think he, he's looking to the next step of his career and, and that would be someone like Pat who's going to be pushing 
mm. pushing for a league, pushing for a cup, pushing you know for Europe or in Europe. Um, I I think he's got more of a chance to play a pass than he does maybe at Rovers. I don't think he's going to go maybe to Bowes. Um, I think Shelburne have a reasonably good shout at getting them as well maybe, but um, I think Pat can offer him that bit more money, and I I think sometimes it can come down to that. And the chance to play for Stephen Kenny in the League of Ireland is very appealing for everybody. Um, and already a reasonably really good squad. He'd be walking into a really good team and a team that's, you know, kind of molded throughout the, as Stephen Kenny came in. And mm. you can sign him, see how he's identified, how he wants to play and how he's setting up and the players he wants. And I think they don't really need to make too many changes. So they could offer him a really lucrative contract to come in. Uh, I actually wouldn't even go, I'd go as far to say as he probably could get offers from the UK as well or Scotland. So I think he's reasonably good enough lower leagues to go that far. Um, I'm going to put as an eight. I think that is a transfer that will happen. Um, I don't think he's going to stay at Waterford anyway. And like I said, he's not, I don't think he'd probably play in Rovers. And I I think, you know, Shell's a rival in Bird, but I just think Pats is going to cut it with everything else. So I put as an eight. I think he'd be a very good addition to Pats. Well, interesting. Dara Powers and Pats is like eight out of ten. And finally is a player that was also released from Bohemians, and that's Danny Grant. Uh, Possibly with a move to the club we just spoke about, Waterford FC, and a reunion with Keith Long. Yeah. Um, obviously, Grant, there was a lot of excitement when he did sign for Bowes and they'd just beaten Pats for a signature. But for his standards, maybe, and how he produced when he was at Bowes before, it was probably disappointing enough. I don't think it was, uh, in terms of effort, no issue there whatsoever. But he seems like a player that's when I generally watch him play, a player that may be suffering from a bit of confidence, maybe the yeah. injuries have, uh, you know, maybe he's lost that bit of acceleration or maybe the injuries have just got him in the head just a little bit, you know what I mean? Even at the back subconscious, as they say, but uh, Waterford FC, he could be tempted to join Keith Long where obviously he was very successful playing under. Yeah, look, firstly, I think Danny's a great lad and best of luck to him. I'm, I'm sad to see him go. Um, I thought when he broke into the Bulls team, Years ago, mm. he was a very big spark in the, in the league and in the team, and he was a standout player for us. And he he earned his move, and I, I'm pretty sure Huddersfield at the time were a Premier League club. Um, mm. he had Premier League or Championship, they're up there anyway. Someone correct me in the comments for that. I'm pretty sure they're a Premier League. I think they were back Premier then. League as well. I think, um, yeah. So like, I, you know, once upon a time he was a Premier League player, like he was that good, and I thought he was too. Maybe not Premier League good, but for his age, mm. very good player. Obviously, very direct, fast, skillful, scored goals. Was really good at cutting in from the wing. He was a really good player. He got his move to England. He got horrendous injuries. Like he got really shafted. Like he was out. But well, I think for like a year and a half at one stage, like he just got me in, went out, came in, went out. He had a, a rough time. And then when he came at the balls, some bad muscle really, injuries, which can yeah. really affect your play as a winger. Yeah, it can obviously, especially with the type of player he was, the fact that he was someone that kind of relied on pace a little bit to help mm. him beat people and dribbling. But had the confidence to beat people and take yeah. on players, but we saw less and less of that when he came back, I think. Less and less of that. And it was a bit frustrating to watch at times because I've known what he could have done four mm. years ago and what he mm. did what he's doing now. He was just a different player and it's, it's sad to see. He's still reasonably long, young though. And I think one of Keith Long's strengths is he's very good at getting the most out of every player at his disposal. And I think Doc worked with him really well at Bowes. And obviously, he had a really good spell at Waterford mm-hmm. at the start of the season to the middle of the season, where he was getting average players looking really good, in my opinion. No disrespect to any of the Waterford players, but he just was. He had that new manager bounce up in the league again. He's really good at getting players riled up and confidence. He's really good in instilling confidence. And I think if Danny's going to move to any any team, I, I would probably put, pick Waterford. I think reunion with Keith Long. Um, I think Waterford have you know, it would be a reasonable uh, enough place for him to go to. I don't really see any other Dublin clubs really wanting to pick pick him up, really. Uh, not overly at the minute. I think a one-year deal of Waterford would be really good for him to try and prove Bowes fans wrong. He, he got a lot of, in my opinion, warranted stick off Bowes fans. I think he he did try his best, but he just didn't have a good season. And look, the club decided to release him. My best of luck to him. Um, I put it reasonably high. I, I'm going to put it as an eight. I think it is pretty likely to happen. I think it will be the destination he'll go. Um, I also heard Cork are looking at him as well. But I also wouldn't rule out the likes of a draw that going in for him to stay up. Um, that could be a good move for him too as a marquee sign for them maybe. But um, Shells are looking for a left winger. <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah. I know Grant I, can play left and right. but you Yeah, know you I mean? can. I'd I just, I just, I'd like to think maybe Shells are going to try and go in for a better player. League champions 
I would think their stock is high enough to try and attract the best players in the league right now at the minute. <laughs> but look, best of luck to Danny wherever he signs for him. I think the move to Watford is quite likely. Yeah, so an 8 out of 10, Danny Grant to Waterford FC. Interesting, uh, Daz, you've gone very high this week, so that's going to be, that's very interesting. Be interested to see what people think in the comments, guys. Let us know. Give us a few ratings out of 10. Would you be happy with these players at your club? Subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Lovely, Daz, thank you. Cheers, Keith.